All right, so I'm, I'm, you call me Jess. I'm one of the senior residents here at UTSA now, it's called. Um, and I'm gonna take a few minutes, uh, maybe like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to kind of review kind of key concepts for the FAST exam, otherwise known as the focus assessment, sonography for trauma, okay? Um, I'm a big proponent about being hands-on, so I would definitely like to have some good times so we can play around with the ultrasound and get familiar and practice with some of the skills, okay? So with ultrasound in general, okay, you have some pros and cons. Alright. One of the pros of ultrasound is that it's very sensitive. The moment you get that probe onto the abdomen, you can quickly pick up some pathology, especially with the FAST exam. So in this little picture here up in the corner, you can see this anechoic area. Uh, and we'll get familiar with the anatomy in just a while. But that is concerning for free fluid in the abdomen. Okay? Of course, it comes with a con in that you can't differentiate what the fluid is. Alright? It could be blood, it could be ascites, it could be bile, it could be urine. Okay. So any type of fluid, it'll look the same. Just anechoic collection of fluid there. A pro for ultrasound is it's very quick. You hook up the, you bring the ultrasound machine right to bedside, you put the probe on, easy, fast, you, you make quick decisions in just a matter of seconds, okay? Of course, a con is that you are very limited by several factors, including body habitus. If a person's a little bit more fluffy, especially here in San Antonio, uh, you have to work with a lot with, with that subcutaneous tissue. Uh, whether a patient has a different anatomical vary, vary uh, including maybe they just recently ate, so there's a bunch of bowels that are kind of obstructing your vision or the, uh, the view, or if they have some kind of trauma and they have subcutaneous emphysema, and it's creating, it's obstructing your view, creating this little shadowy effect, okay? A pro, it's the ultrasound's really great for procedures. Uh, what may take you 15 minutes by just kind of trying to hit the uh, arterial, radial artery uh, for an A-line, may just take you five minutes if you just do ultrasound because you basically see the anatomy, you can see the needle entering whatever uh, structure you're trying to get into. So it's really quick for procedures and you minimize the risk of any uh, injuries. And then of course, one of the cons is, is limited by provider skills. So if you're a complete newbie, have no idea what you're looking for and your images are terrible, um, you know, it's, you're gonna be very, very limited as far as the knowledge or the information that the ultrasound's gonna give you. But that's why practice makes perfect. So every time if you're in the emergency department and you have a chance to play with the ultrasound, just get hands on and get used to seeing whatever normal um, anatomy there is. And then at one, one point, something will pop out and be different and you'll look like a rock star. So just practice makes perfect, okay? So again, you see this uh, little picture that I showed you earlier. Uh, this is the liver, just so you guys know, and this is the kidney. And you see this anechoic collection of stuff that's concerning for fluid, okay? If you have a patient come into the trauma bay after a motor vehicle collision and they're hypotensive, systolic blood pressure is 90, heart rate is 120, and you put the ultrasound probe on the abdomen, you see this, what would you assume the fluid is? Can anyone give me an answer? Blood. Okay. So this person is immediately going to the OR for next lap. All right. What if it's a cirrhotic patient coming in and my stomach hurts, they've been having fever, and they have this really distended abdomen? Then what would you assume this? Anechoic, I'm sorry, this anechoic fluid is? The sides. The sides. Okay. So then you may consider maybe an differential spontaneous bacterial peritonitis as a probable, as a probable issue for, a probable answer for his abdominal pain. If you have a 23 year old female with acute abdominal pain, uh, grilled in distress, tachycardic, hypotensive, and then you do the FAST exam and you see that again, then what would you assume may be going on? Rupture of topic until proven otherwise. Other things that it could be, maybe a hemorrhagic cyst that's bleeding, okay? But definitely ruptured a topic. So you gotta use context clues whenever you're doing that ultrasound, okay? So let's review anatomy really quickly. Um, just, uh, and it's important to get very, familiarize yourself with anatomy, because when you're doing your ultrasound, you wanna make sure you know what you're looking at, okay? And what, it, and quickly interpret what's, what, what to, uh, just the uh, ultrasound in general, just to interpret things uh, correctly. So when it comes to the abdominal pelvic cavity, you have the visceral and parietal layers, right? This pink area here is the greater sac, which in cross-section, this baby blue area is also the greater sac, okay? And you have the lesser sac, this baby blue area here, which correlates with that darker blue area here in cross-section, okay? Familiarize yourself with this, okay? The pink area, the greater sac, is further divided into two areas, the supra and infracolic areas, and it's divided by the transverse mesocolon right here. Okay, so everything up here is the supra colic, and then here's the infracolic, all right? Um, it's important to kind of know at least the general anatomy because fluid tends to travel in different areas in the abdomen, whether you're in a standing position or a supine position, okay? So for instance, 
Um, if someone comes in after some trauma and they've been standing for a long time, they come with abdominal pain, um, and you put the ultrasound, okay? Where would you assume, where would you think is the most gravity dependent on someone who is standing, uh, standing for a long period of time? Where would the fluid most likely collect? Speak up. Exactly, yeah, so somewhere in the pelvis, okay? That is the most gravity dependent area when you consider the abdominal pelvic area, right? The pelvis is the most gravity dependent area. Let's say the person is supine for a long period of time. They're NBC, maybe they self-extracted, and they're on the ground for maybe 15 minutes until the EMS shows up. Where would the fluid, let's say they have some kind of liver laceration or splenic laceration, they're lying on the ground, where would you feel the, or where would you think maybe the fluid would collect in the abdomen? Anyone? Yes, <laughs> so Morrison's, fat, uh, Morrison's pouch, or the, the uh, uh, the hepatorenal recess, okay, in the right upper quadrant. And so it ends for three reasons, okay? Obviously, you know, the uh, pelvis is the most gravity dependent because it's the most posterior aspect, okay? That's a given. But when you're just considering the abdomen itself, the abdominal cavity, okay, we have three reasons that the, re the fluid may collect in the right upper quadrant, okay? One, you have the sacral promontory here that's causing fluid to kind of flow backwards up, up into the abdomen, okay? Two, you have the uh, frontal colic ligament in this left upper quadrant that's kind of high up, okay? And I'll have a little analogy for y'all, but it's pretty high up, so then fluid or blood, but you have like a laceration of sorts, blood will travel down towards the pericolic areas, here the, the ascending and, and descending um, colon. Blood will go from the frontal colic ligament down to the pericolic area and kind of transfers over to the right upper quadrant. So you have the sacral promontory that's causing blood or fluid, to go up towards the abdomen. You have this peak over here that's causing blood to go down over here. And then three, the right upper quadrant or Morrison's pouch um, is the most posterior uh, part of the abdominal cavity. Okay, so three reasons why blood tends to collect in the right upper quadrant. Okay? So think about Mount Everest here. If you think about the peak, okay, you got the spleen being kind of the, the peak of the mountain, and Morrison's pouch over here being kind of the base. And of course, the most gravity dependent of all uh, uh, parts is the pelvis, so down here by the cliffs. Okay? So that give you a good idea of where to find fluid, most part of the abdomen? Okay. Um, so when doing ultrasound with the FAST exam, we tend to use either one of these probes, the phase array probe or the curvilinear probe, okay? It is a low frequency, um, probe that tends to go a little deeper into the structures of the abdomen, okay? Do not go busting the linear probe because that's for higher frequency, that's more superficial type of structures like veins, arteries, whatnot, okay? So the phase array or the curvilinear. And when you hold the probe, for the most part, I try to tell folks uh, that the marker, this little dot here, tends to go to your thumb all the time, okay? Um, and this marker correlates with this little green dot on the side of the screen. You'll see when you get to practicing in the lab real quick. Okay, uh, so make sure you have the probe marker in the right direction so that you know what is medial, what is lateral, what is up, what is down, all right? And when doing ultrasound, you make sure you do one movement at a time. Don't go do multiple things because then you're just gonna get all sorts of confused, okay? So you could uh, obviously put pressure, tilt, you could rotate, and then I like, there's this other one that I like to call rocking. So when I say, can you center the image? I'm gonna ask you to rock the probe, and essentially instead of moving like tilting, you're gonna be moving the other way. Probably doesn't make any sense. We'll, we'll play around with it in the lab, uh, just so that you can center the image appropriately in, the, uh, in the, the screen, okay? But essentially, probe marker towards your uh, thumb or towards the patient's head, okay? So I have a perfect male specimen here that's trying to show us an example of what, how you do a fast exam, okay? So whenever you're doing a fast exam, you start off with the right upper quadrant. Remember we discussed the anatomy, fluid tends to collect in the Morrison's pouch a lot more frequently just because of the anatomical structures and the ligaments and whatnot. So always look in the right upper quadrant first. If it's positive, you already have your answer, especially in the trauma, go to surgery, okay? So, um, so in the right upper quadrant, this line represents like the, probe, uh, the uh, probe footprint and this red dot uh, indicates the, the uh, marker. Okay, so make sure that the marker's pointing towards the patient's head whenever you're doing the right upper quadrant view, all right? And hold the probe like this. Don't be so awkward and be holding it with all sorts of weird, okay? Make it comfortable for yourself, so hold the marker like that, all right? With the probe marker towards the patient's head. Um, when do the subzygote view, okay? Marker towards your thumb, all right? And hold it as such, 
Okay, some people like to hold it like this and they're kind of doing all sorts of weird movements. Make it comfortable for yourself again. So hold it just like that. Kind of you're impaling with their heart, okay? Then the left upper quadrant, you kind of have to like hold the probe and you see how the person holding the probe, you have to change the way you're holding it every time. But make it comfortable for yourself and most of the time, depending on patient habitus, uh, you may have to knuckle up against the bed and kind of aim upwards, okay? But again, probe marker towards the patient's head, all right? And then the last view is a, a super pubic area, okay? And kind of hold it as such with a pro marker towards your thumb, okay? And always be in, I would start with the right upper quadrant every time, because again, that's the most uh, uh, frequent area where air, uh, fluid tends to collect. Uh, but be succinct and systematic every time. Right upper quadrant is subzygote, left upper quadrant is super pubic, so that you don't forget a certain area. Sometimes when the adrenaline is rushing, you're freaking out, you may forget the subzygote area because you want to go to the left upper quadrant. So do a circle every time so you know you're not missing in a certain area, okay? So when it comes to the right upper quadrant, just reviewing the anatomy, what it looks like in the ultrasound. Again, probe marker here. This little stripe here is a diaphragm. You see some of the liver, the kidney, and you see some, the, the pericolic gutter right here. Okay, depending on how skinny the person, you may be see, able to see some of the, uh, the vertebral shadows here, vertebral body shadows. Uh, but this is what you're looking for in the right upper quadrant. You want to see all three structures here, diaphragm, liver, kidney. Depending on how cooperative the patient is, you may ask them to take a deep breath just so that the diaphragm comes into view. Okay? So, again, we've already seen this image multiple times. Any anechoic collection is concerned for fluid, whether it be blood, bile, urine, ascites, okay? So that would be positive. Um, oftentimes when you see the right upper quadrant, you may see like a mirror artifact. That is, the liver here, the, you'll see the liver structure and you familiarize yourself. You'll see the liver up above the diaphragm, and that's a little weird in the first. Um, and that's normal, okay? However, if you do do an ultrasound and you see, oh, positive fluid here underneath the diaphragm, and then you see like collection of fluid above the diaphragm, that's also concerning for a pleural effusion. You often can see this with patients, uh, cirrhotic patients who have like a lot of ascites, sometimes they also collect fluid in the pleural cavity. So you say, oh, positive test exam. And then you'll see also fluid within the, the pleural cavity concerning for a pleural effusion, okay? Uh, the subcycloid view, Again, you're kind of impaling the patient up in the subcycloid area. And what you're looking for is the heart itself and the pericardial sac. So you see this little white line, that's the pericardial sac. And you'll see part of the liver kind of getting in the way there, okay? So that's what you're aiming. You'll see the heart contracting. Sometimes it won't be as positive as this, but this is pretty obviously positive. You'll see a bunch of fluid collection around the heart. It's a pericardial effusion, okay? And sometimes it could be as subtle as this, just a little bit, okay? And this picture actually is an example of a, car um, a cardiac tamponade physiology in which during, when the heart is supposed to be relaxing, the right ventricle collapses because there's so much fluid there, okay? But that's essentially a positive subside for view, okay? Normal, there's no fluid, it's the heart, that's positive. One thing, please do not be confused, sometimes it can happen. If someone is a little bit fluffy, a little bit more adipose tissue, they can have an adipose, um, a little bit of adipose tissue around the heart and may look like free fluid, but it's not. So as an FYI, I have a little star asterisk for that little situation. In the left upper quadrant, again, you see the diaphragm, this little stripe here, <coughs> the spleen, and the kidney. Okay. Same concept on the left upper quadrant. Oftentimes you can see kind of mirror artifact where you see what looks like the spleen, but above the diaphragm. You're like, what the, hell? What the heck does he have a spleen above his diaphragm? It's a slug. Okay, that's a normal, normal view. All right. Um, oftentimes you can get, it'll be, it's, uh, I think the left upper quadrant is probably the most difficult view to get because you have to work between the liver, I'm sorry, between the ribs, and then you have the stomach in the way, some of the bowel, so you may have to rotate the probe oftentimes, so you may see some, some stomach getting in the way, kind of obscuring your view. And it gets even more difficult when people do not have a spleen, okay? The spleen is an uh, organ that has lots of blood, and it acts as a medium to transfer the sound, and you can get better views. If you don't have a spleen, then the view in the left upper quadrant will be very difficult to, to see, visualize. So here's an example of a positive FAST exam. The fluid on the right upper quadrant is between the liver and the kidney, right? On this side, it's between the diaphragm and the spleen, all right? So you really want to get a good view of that diaphragm, this stripe here. 
If you need to have the patient maybe rotate a little bit more towards you or ask them to take a deep breath, if they're cooperative, it's very important to get a good view of that diaphragm, that diaphragm to visualize any free fluid between the spleen and the diaphragm. So this is positive, okay? You can also see here, this is also a positive uh, fast scan. Here's a kidney, here's a diaphragm. You, hear, you have some free fluid here. It's not as anechoic as that one here. And this is because this patient has maybe, maybe a little bit delayed presentation and they have actually coagulation already formed, okay? And that, that's a little bit positive blow right there, the anechoic collection. Good. And then, of course, the last view is a superpubic view. And, of course, it, dif it differs between males and females and whether they have the anatomical structures like the uterus and whatnot. But in the female uh, view in superpubic, you do a transverse, uh, sorry, yeah, transverse view, and you see the square here, that is the bladder, all right? And the circle down here, is the uterus. You rotate that probe marker up towards the patient's head and that will change. The bladder will now look like a little bit of a triangle and you actually see the uterus kind of coming up behind it. Okay, So you can see sometimes the vaginal stripe, the uterus, the endometrial stripe. Um, and the place where you want to find fluid here is between what, what, what structure? In the pelvis. The rectum and the uterus. Rectum and the uterus. Yes, otherwise that's the pouch of Douglas. Okay, so you'll see it somewhere over here. All right. For the male, of course, you'll see the bladder again looking like a square. You may think, oh my gosh, that's very fluid. Nope, those are his seminal vesicles, okay? And you can see the prostate. And same thing, if you turn the probe marker towards the head, you'll see kind of similar presentation with the, the bladder looking like a triangle. And the, the one place you wanna look for the male is between the, 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 the colon and the bladder, okay? Here is a positive fast. You got the bladder here looking like a square, and then the anechoic collection of fluid. All right? Pretty easy. So multiple limitations to fast exam. One, whether you have the, uh, what are they called? The windows. That is, you have blood-filled organs. The liver and the spleen, like I just told you, if you don't have a spleen, you're not gonna be able to get a good view of that left upper quadrant. So it's important that you have these, these structures available so that the sound can travel through them and you can see the, the structures a lot better, as well as the bladder. If the bladder's full of urine, you're able to get some good, good views, but if there's no, no uh, urine in the, in the bladder, the, the view would be a little bit obscure, okay? Of course, scars. If someone's had multiple surgeries in their abdomen, their ligaments are not gonna be the normal ligaments that you may think the fluid may collect in different areas, whether it be the pericolic gutters or more predominantly in the left upper quadrant. So. Be knowledgeable of your limitations. If someone has a multiple abdominal scars, the fluid may not collect in the areas that you may think. And of course, the scars themselves can also cause your image to be very limited or kind of obscure. Of course, if you're nice and fluffy, obese habitus can be very limited, your limit your, um, your views as well. Lots of subcutaneous tissue you have to work through. Again, if your bowels are in the way, I know those of us who were involved in the ultrasound research, we've had some people who maybe just ate lunch, and I'm trying to get a view of the if you're being a kid, but I can't because their bowels are just peristalsing. I'm trying to press the bowels out of the way, but it's very difficult to get some good views. So bowels can get in the way. As well as that, like I said earlier, subcutaneous emphysema. If someone has a pneumothorax or there's air underneath their tissue, when you're trying to get images, the gas may cause uh, artifact and shadowing that can limit your views again as well as edema. Some of the cellulitis over that skin can cause kind of cobblestone effect and your images can be limited. And of course, the, the number one limiting factor is of course, if you're a complete new to ultrasound, okay? <laughs> when you first get exposed to this, it's, it's very difficult. I'm trying to say, look, this is a kidney. And you're like, what, what the heck are you looking at? Everything looks great to me. So just familiarize yourself, practice, practice time again, get used to what's normal anatomy and you'll pick up on it eventually, okay? So takeaway points, right upper quadrant is the most sensitive area, okay, especially if you're supine, right? Remember the way the ligaments are all arranged in your abdomen, the right upper right quadrant is the most gravity dependent area, if it's just the abdomen itself. But the most extreme uh, gravity dependent area is the pelvis itself, okay? The right upper quadrant is the number one area to look, and look between Morse's pouch and between the liver and the kidney. The left upper quadrant, it's a little bit different, check between the diaphragm and the spleen, okay? And of course, like I said, the pelvis is the most very dependent area if you think of the abdominal pelvic area. All right? So those are key, key points. We're gonna go to the lab and go play some and uh, kind of get familiarize yourself with the ultrasound. 
Uh, we're going to have to rely on some of the um, volunteers here. Possibly one of your great classmates can help us take a look at their tummy. Hopefully they don't have any free fluid because then we'd probably freak out a little bit. Um, especially your female. Okay. Uh, any questions or concerns? No? Can you say something? No? All right. Well, let's go, go play some. You guys have to sign in. I can't. 